So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, and it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome to two examples of identifying a horizontal stretch or horizontal compression. g of x is a transformation of f of x, where g of x equals a times f of bx. We want to determine the value of a and the value of b. To do this, it's going to be helpful to analyze the coordinates of corresponding points. So let's find the coordinates of these three points for f of x, and then these three points for g of x. So for f of x, this point here has coordinates negative two comma negative four. This point has coordinates one comma six, and this point has coordinates three comma negative six. And then for g of x, we would have negative four comma negative four, two comma six, and six comma negative six. Now by analyzing these points, notice how the y coordinates are the same, which means we do not have a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, but the x coordinates have changed, which means that we have a horizontal stretch or compression. So we should be able to see that from f of x to g of x, f of x has been stretched horizontally to form g of x. So looking at our equation, g of x equals a times f of bx, because we don't have a vertical stretch or compression, a would be one, so our goal here is to find the value of b, which affects the horizontal stretch or compression. So for a quick review, again, it doesn't apply in this case, but if we have y equals a times f of x, where a is greater than one, we have a vertical stretch, which we see here by y equals two times f of x, and if a is between zero and one, we have a vertical compression, which we see here by y equals 0 0.5 times f of x. But again, in our case, because we have a horizontal stretch, we're concerned about finding the value of b. So in this form, if b is greater than one, we actually have a horizontal compression, which we see here by y equals f of two x. And if b is between zero and one, we have a horizontal stretch, which is our case, which we see by y equals f of 0 0.5 x. And this should make sense because notice how for the same function values of y equals f of x, for y equals f of 0 0.5 x, it would take larger x values to have the same y values as f of x. For example, here, notice how if x was eight, 0 0.5 times eight would be four. When x is eight, this would be f of four, the same as the function value when x is four for the basic parent function. But to find the value of b is a little trickier than determining the value of a. If we start with the parent function, we would multiply each x-coordinate by one over b to determine the x-coordinates of the, to determine the x-coordinates of the horizontally stretched or compressed function. So if we can determine what we multiply by to find the corresponding x-coordinates, we would set that value equal to one over b and then solve for b. So going back to our example, if we take a look at the corresponding x values, notice how negative two times two is equal to negative four, one times two is equal to two, and three times two is equal to six. That does not mean b equals two, b is actually equal to the reciprocal of two, or one half. So we could set up an equation as one divided by b equals two and solve for b, but it will be the reciprocal of two or one half. Let's go ahead and just show that. I put this over one, I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply. Two times b is two b, must equal one times one. So two b equals one, divide both sides by two, b equals one half. Which means g of x, is equal to, again, a is one because we do not have a vertical stretch or compression, so we just have f of 
1 half x. So a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1 half. Let's take a look at a second example. Again, let's find the coordinates of key points on each graph. So we'll find the coordinates here, here, and here on f of x. So we have negative 6 comma 7, 0 comma negative 4, and 3 comma 3. And then for g of x, let's find the coordinates here, here, and here. So we have negative 1 comma 3, 0 comma negative 4, and 2 comma 7. Now this one's a little trickier because notice how the high point on f of x is to the left and the high point on g of x is to the right. Which means this point here corresponds to this point and this point here corresponds to this point. So once again notice how the corresponding points have the same y coordinates which means there is not a vertical stretch or compression but the x-coordinates have changed. They've also been reflected across the vertical axis or the y-axis, which means f of x has been compressed horizontally and also reflected across the y-axis. Now let's compare corresponding x-coordinates. So we'll compare negative 6 and positive 2, positive 3 and negative 1, and zero and zero. We want to determine what times these x-coordinates would give us these x-coordinates. We can determine that value, then b is a reciprocal of that value. So it may be helpful to set up an equation in this case. We want to know negative six times what is equal to positive two. So negative six times x equals positive two, or if we want, three times what would be negative one. Three times x equals negative one. This equation is easier to solve. Dividing both sides by three, we have x equals negative one-third. Of course, we could solve this equation too and still get negative one-third. Again, this is not b. b is a reciprocal of this value, so b would be negative three. But if we wanted to, we could set up an equation and set one divided by b equal to negative one-third, cross multiply, and solve for b. So we'd have negative b equals positive three, or b equals negative three. Remember the lesson on reflections. If b is negative, we do have a reflection across the y-axis, which we already noticed. So we have g of x equals f of negative three x. So again, a is one, and b is negative three. I hope you found this helpful.